Hey friends, for today's installment of Band Films Week, I've got a little riff track style commentary for the film Cannibal Holocaust, one of the most notorious films of all time. Don't worry, the commentary hasn't started yet. Uh, basically, you are responsible for getting your own copy of the movie. Uh, if you live in the US, it's on Shudder. Last I checked, Shudder is offering a free 30-day trial through Corona. Um, that might not be a thing anymore, don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure that's still ongoing. So if you're in America, you can watch it for free. If you're not in America, just get a VPN. Um, now this film has been sliced and diced every which way, so please make sure your copy is 1 hour, 35 minutes, and about 40 seconds. I think it's a little under, actually. Um, also be warned, certain versions of this film will start with a warning screen that say, like, Warning, this film is disturbing. You might not want to watch it. We're showing the whole thing. We don't commentary over that. We start on the first frame of the film. Um, so make sure you're starting on the first frame of the film. I will give you a warning up front. This film is one of the most controversial movies of all time for a very good reason. If you are sensitive to gore, if you are sensitive to rape, if you are sensitive to animal abuse, maybe sit this one out. There will be an edited for YouTube version going up along with this. Uh, it'll be, you know, just the highlights, just the highlights from this commentary that'll be edited for YouTube, should be safe to watch, no animal abuse, no rape, promise. Um, for the rest of you, there will be uh, clips from the movie every about 10 minutes just to make sure you're still synced up with the film. They'll be very brief. Uh, that's all I have. A uh, very special thanks to my friend Michael for appearing in this commentary. And uh, thank you all for watching. Welcome back to Mackle and Zatch. Uh, Michael, which Rich Alvarez project are we looking at today? Oh, hi, Zatch. Uh, today we're going to be looking at his movie called uh, Cannibal Holocaust, <laughs> this, this which is only... he made in 2007, right before Stupid Mario Bros. The, mm -hmm. This this you know <laughs> this joke is only funny if people know your content, because this is going up yeah. on my channel. Introduce <laughs> yourself, and we'll talk about this music. What'd you say? Introduce yourself. Oh, uh, I, my name is uh, Mackle James Shadackle, and I... Uh, uh, Matt said, do you want to watch Cannibal Holocaust? And I was like, you know, I'm really, because uh, I'm really anti-Holocaust. Everyone should know that about me. So I wasn't so sure about that. But I am very pro-Cannibal. So I thought, like, yeah, this 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 will be a good movie to check out. Just a very calming movie. Nice scenery yeah, shots. Like nice, that. calm, acoustic music. This is the most inappropriate opening music for any movie. Because it's yeah. so pleasant. <laughs> and this movie is so fucked up. You know, I want to I wanna say something else about that cannibal comment I just made. Because, you know, it's, if I don't say anything else, it's going to look a little... It's going to sound a little bad that I said that. Okay, um... So there's a lot of misconceptions about cannibals. Um... The number one is that we murder people but that's not true that's not actually the case the case is that there is someone amongst a large group of cannibals that we call the risk taker um and all that stuff is put on him so most of us uh our our own our only crime is having a nice meal well and desecrating a body but <laughs> i also would like to dismiss the rumor that we dig up bodies because that's gross and i don't appreciate that claim The, the soundtrack to this movie is legit really good. <laughs> I really like the soundtrack to this movie. I do like the way it sounds. Okay, I'm I'm done. I won't I won't <laughs> I'm done being an asshole. Yeah, no, I think it uh sounds very nice. <laughs> yeah, who talks about the fucking moon landing? <laughs> 
<laughs> no one Dude. cares about that. Fuck the moon landing. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm not behind, by the way. I just responded about 10 seconds late. <laughs> you Are you cutting this down, or are you, like, uploading it in its entirety? Uh, I would like to have both a full commentary track and an edited version. <laughs> oh, joy. <laughs> if, if we fuck up somewhere... Eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> So, was this movie made, like, supposed to be... People were supposed to think it was real, or...? Yeah, this was sort of, like, the first found footage movie. Um, Although, it, it has this weird framing device where they go find the footage. So, mm -hmm. it's like a found footage movie within a fictional movie. Okay. So they were so. never trying to sell this part as found footage, then? No. Just the part of these people in the jungle. Gotcha. Oh! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Haha, <laughs> foreshadowing. Uh oh. Are they are they are they not gonna make it back in one piece? Uh well I, I mean I guess technically that is not the case. <clears throat> That's a spoiler, Matt. I didn't know there was gonna be a conflict in this movie. <laughs> Why a bunch of jerks. Oh, see. It wasn't a spoiler. They revealed right at the beginning they didn't come back. Dang. You, you really showed me, Matt. Amazonia. That's an interesting name. So did people think this part was found footage? Um, yes, they did. So the director of this film, Rogerio Diodato, specifically tried to make it seem like the footage shot in the Amazon was authentic to the point that he asked the actors not to appear in anything for like a year or two after this. Yeah, I've heard that story. So it would make them seem like they were actually dead. Of course, that kind of backfired because uh, Italy, the the Italian police arrested him and charged yeah. him with murder, and he had to prove that the actors were still alive. <laughs> Which is not the only time that has happened. There are a few movies where they're like, ooh, we killed a real person, and then later they had to be like, okay, no, we didn't kill a real person. But what about, like, the people who knew these guys who are eating people right now? Like, they went back home to their families and like, uh, dude, uh, what, what the fuck have you been up to? <laughs> uh, I believe most of the natives in the movie are actual natives. Of this, like, of this island, or? Yeah, of, of this area of South America. And the director just walked up to them and said, hey... Let's make a fucking movie. Yeah. That's not altogether uncommon. Uh, yeah. American directors have done, or, you know, foreign directors have done that. They'll go out to some village and be like, hey, you guys want to be in our movie? 
And they're like, yeah. Now, are they killing these people because they're cannibals, or... Uh, yeah. Because... Well, I don't know, actually. They're not really a part of the plot. It's been a while since I've seen this. Yeah. <laughs> so... But the, I, I do know these guys are not really a part of the plot. So is this like a Matt's fun time bad movie show level of quality or is it just like the controversy and the backstory that makes you want to watch it? Uh well it's it's banned films week. It's for banned films week and this is one oh. this is one of the most widely banned films. Um, yeah. Not hard to figure out why it allegedly had real murders. It actually has actual animal murders. And yeah. even aside from that, there's a lot of murder and rape in this movie. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> um, is there a... Uh, I think I heard stuff about this movie. Is there like a... Uh, is there like a monkey that actually gets beheaded in this? Or is that like a... Uh, I believe there is a monkey that dies. There's Damn. also a pig and a turtle, at least. I think I heard about the turtle, too, actually. Because I was going to say it was either a monkey or a turtle. <clears throat> I don't know, a lot of movies have done stuff like that. I think a lot of the time it's just like, it's done in a place where they're going to die either way. Yeah, uh, all of the animals killed in this film were eaten, um, I think mm. by the natives, but oh. that is the part of this film I object to the most. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously not very, uh, supportive of that either. Yeah, um, it has happened in other films, even, like, mainstream films, uh, Apocalypse Now, they killed, like, a buffalo... And, uh, Friday the 13th, they killed a snake. Have you ever what? heard of Milo and Otis? Oh, yeah. The, they, like, there was, like, serious animal abuse going on on that movie. There was, like, 30 Milos and, uh, 20 Otises. Jeez. That was a joke. That was a joke. I don't know how many that, that they went through, if any, but there was absolutely animal abuse on that set. And that's not even, like, an exploitation film. This is exploitation. It's supposed to have that type of shit. Yeah. Yeah, My Little Otis is supposed to be a cute children's movie. Yeah. There's kind of some controversy shit, controversial shit in uh, Old Yeller, but... A little, little dog on bear action. Yeah, well... That's kind of how it was in Hollywood for a long time. Like, yeah. there just were no regulations on what you could do with animals. Yeah. Are they doing ADR here, or...? Uh... Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's an Italian movie. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And that's... That's how the Italians did. They'd just get people to talk in their native tongue and then dub it over. Yeah. I mean, even the good movies, like Good, the Bad, the Ugly, do that. Yeah. So what are they doing in this jungle again? 
So these guys are a documentary crew. And this documentary crew is going into deep into the jungle, into the green inferno, to study this cannibal tribe. Hmm. I uh, said the F those word. Fu- those fuckers that they just gunned down. <laughs> uh, not even. I- People they just gunned down are not a part of the cannibals. Oh. This is... Weren't they eating people? Uh, okay, they might be cannibals. You got they're me there. They're eating something. Yeah, you got <laughs> me eating... there. They they might be cannibals. <laughs> but uh, uh, you eat a little human meat? Uh, you're a cannibal. It's absurd. If I eat vegetables, I don't become a vegetarian. I can eat one person and not be a cannibal. <laughs> yeah. Alright, you know, I, and what if it's just for special occasions? What if I was going to kill the person anyway and I wasn't intended on eating them at first? <laughs> uh, well, then you have other problems. <laughs> And it's not technically illegal to eat people. It's just generally considered desecration of a body. If they say you can eat them, you're allowed to eat them. (laughs) There's like a British comedian who's like, his friend was like having an amputation or something. So he's, he like got the hand and ate it. He's like, look, it's illegal for me to eat this hand. Ha ha, I'm a cannibal and it's legal. (laughs) <laughs> you just go out in public eating the person mm, I mean a person oh god why would I do this <laughs> oh but it's super legal ooh you can't do anything about it There's no piranhas because they couldn't afford to film them. That is actually (laughs) true. They had a scene with piranhas and they couldn't afford to film it. You, you You know, when something doesn't go right, you don't have to acknowledge it. You can just ignore it and that will make people just not even think about it. So many movies do that. Do what? So many shit... So many movies and shows do that, like, explain why something didn't happen. Well. It's like a cast member failing to show up for, like, a TV show shoot, and then them saying, where's Poochie? Yeah, this character who's totally behind that stack of boxes over there (laughs) says, I'm the better. (laughs) Okay, I think I misspoke earlier actually. This is not this is not the crew going into the jungle to uh film a documentary. This is just the guy going into the jungle to try to find the documentary crew who've been missing for oh. 2 weeks. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're still in the fictional part of the film. There's that turtle shell. Sure hope that has a payoff. Oh, is that turtle shell? Do I sense a payoff? <laughs> With that turtle shell. Oh, hey, a ty- uh, leopard. The subtitles literally say Jaguar, Michael. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> a cheetah. <laughs> oh, look, a panther. <laughs> oh, man, it's a lion. <laughs> Weird that there's a oh, house cat in the jungle. Oh, I was about to fucking say house cat. <laughs> Got him. Mm. It's cool cat. 
Are you going to cover Cool Cat during Ban Films Month? I I don't think Cool Cat is banned anywhere. Hmm. That cat should be banned. He creeps me out. Who? Is that where Pete? Is that is that controversy number one right there? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there are. There are cuts you... of this film that cut out the uh, animal murder. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I have the uh, Grindhouse releasing Blu-ray, and it includes an animal abuse-free cut of the film. Yikes. But this film has been sliced and diced every which way. There are dozens it... of cuts of this. Are that, we like, watching an anim- animal abuse cut? This, or is this, the animal... is, this is the full version. Oh, okay. Uncut full movie. Oh boy. <laughs> well, it's already a very gross movie. Is that a possum? It's a muskrat. <sighs> Whoa. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's oh. probably real. Oh, I... God damn it. Oh, that's so fucking bad. Yes. Jesus Christ, now I'm just sad. <laughs> I mean... I don't know. That's... Oh god, that was really bad. <laughs> that was really bad, Matt. <laughs> What's this? is this the uh fucking Woody I was Allen about to bit. make a it's the Woody I was about Allen to make a... where he sneezes into the cocaine <laughs> Oh was that like a prop that they that has to be a prop right it's... <laughs> I can't Christ. say for certain either way God I was gonna make a joke Both saying it's no different possible. than watching. I was just gonna make a joke saying it's no different than watching my dog in the yard, but oh my god, that got my st- <laughs> that got sad really quick. I think it's very fucked up that Rich Alvarez made this movie. <laughs> I mean, uh, can't believe his friends went along with it, you know? Yeah. Chris. Julian. What the fuck? (laughs) Why would you just assume that's what it is? He is super fucking familiar. (laughs) That's, like, so weirdly specific. It's like, what year did this movie come out again? 1980. 1980? So, yeah, this is a far good bit before the internet, and he still knows about this shit. Like, he had to put a lot of effort into researching it. He's going to draw a little smiley face before he kills her with that rock. Oh, that's the good shit. <laughs> Did you just take a hit of something? I just popped open a can. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was close enough to the mic to hear, but... <laughs> Well, I heard you and your timing was really bad. (laughs) Oh, yeah, fucking sodomizing this woman with a giant rock. That's some good shit. (laughs) That's what the guy with the mustache is thinking. He's only pretending to feel bad about it. 
I mean, like I said, he was pretty familiar with the context. I've used this track in videos before. The the music. Have you? Yeah. It's good music. It's like legitimately really like a really good score. Yeah. For a really I... disgusting movie. No, I, I love the soundtrack. Hold on. I yeah. love the titles of the uh songs. Hold on. Shoot. There you go. It's like Adulteress's Punishment, Massacre of the Troop, Crucified Woman, Relaxing in the Savannah, <laughs> Savage White, <laughs> Drinking Cocoa. Your friends are all dying. Two hours of a dog starving to death. Clouds are really pretty. <laughs> yeah, go on, Miguel. <laughs> oh. Stabbing myself in the stomach just to feel something. <clears throat> My dad drank himself to death. Walking the dog. What the f- Are we getting a, a fucking second rape scene? This early in? No, he just- Okay, he just wanted to take his pants off. Um... <laughs> A bottle of whiskey. <laughs> mm, mm, that, mm, mm. That's your reward for surviving this attack. <laughs> Attempting to murder him demonstrates good intentions. Yeah, man, I mean, that's how I met most of my friends. It's like, hey! Completely, was... completely butt-ass naked while they were trying to kill you. Hey! You survived attempt number three. Come on, buddy. Let's go get a drink. Akuna Matata, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> it is a wonderful phrase. Did Lion King rip off Cannibal Holocaust? <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> you know this movie did take place after Kimba. It could be a Kimba ripoff. Hmm. It could be a Kimba cuz you see that guy has a gun. Uh and there were definitely people with guns dressed in a similar fashion walking through the woods or the jungle. And Kimba. Mhm. Mm and there's definitely a lot of dead bodies in this movie, just like in Kimba. Yeah, yeah. And then there was also that scene where they slit that animal's throat with a knife in Kimba. Not even really slit, just kind of, like, stuck it in. Well, that was the sequel series. Yeah, that was the sequel. That was the 1997 movie. <laughs> Whoa, Kimba ripped off... Cannibal Holocaust this whole time. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Just act natural. Pull a pistol.
Now, is this movie still banned in the United States? Uh, I don't think it was ever banned in the United States. Always been allowed in the United States? Yeah. Possibly only in a censored form in some places. But it is definitely not still banned in America. Okay. There are a few countries I think it's still banned in. Like, even the uncensored version is not banned in America anymore? No. I own it on Blu-ray. Gotcha, gotcha. Because th- this movie is doing more than I thought it would. <laughs> um... To my knowledge, I don't think there are any movies currently banned in the U.S. Hmm. Unless they're just, like, actual real snuff films or child porn. Yeah. The the U.S. is very good about that type of thing. Mm Mm-hmm. You can release pretty much anything as long as it is not explicitly illegal. Yeah. God. What the hell are they eating? Is that just like... Elmer's glue? (laughs) I was gonna say that stuff that they use to fix holes in the wall, but I can't remember. Drywall. Drywall. (laughs) They eat in drywall. (laughs) Seriously, what the fuck is that? (laughs) God, this opening is way longer than I remember. This does not need to be this long. They could jump ahead to him (laughs) just having the film. Yeah. So this is still not the found footage part? No. I mean, it definitely doesn't look like found footage. It looks like a filmed movie. Like, it looks like just a actual movie but like uh hunted and eaten Brilliant commentary we've got going. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. The the full version of this is going to be very entertaining. <laughs> I mean, I I do feel like we're talking a lot, but we also, are. There's just like right. There's just parts where it's like, what do I've you got, say about this? I've got to take some time to observe too. You know, <laughs> that's that's why I like the edited down version of stuff. But I also like doing full commentaries. I feel like if you watched the twelve hour. YMS 13 Reasons Why full commentary. I feel like there would be silent parts. Yeah. Especially since by the end of that series, Adam sounded fucking dead inside. (laughs) You're not not supposed to mention the YMS commentary. I don't want people to know where I get my ideas from. Mm. That was... I mean...
Oh man. A lot of these are like like fairly well done effects even for now. Oh yeah, really good special effects. Yeah. Yeah, did he have to like uh prove I mean, to be fair, it's pretty that right there kind of just looks like they're painting on her. Yeah, but there's certain shots with certain angles where it does look very convincing. Mm-hmm. Um I mean uh like the full skeleton they found earlier just like out in the middle of the like on the beach. That probably was a real skeleton. That's just what movie yeah, productions really? did. Oh yeah, in like the seventies and eighties, yeah, they took it. It was way cheaper to buy f- real skeletons than fake skeletons. Yeah, so that's why you get stuff like Poltergeist, where they used real skeletons for a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, I definitely know there's movies that did use real skeletons. I mean, I. There's even fucking rumors that, like, a Disney park, a Disney park ride used real skeletons at one point. And that might, that, I I kind of doubt that that's true, but I mean... Uh, f- people... from what I have heard, it is almost certainly true. Wow. Up until, like, the 80s. Yeah. I think people took it, adv- I mean, I don't, yeah, I mean, I guess so, like... So... <laughs> Social norms, especially in filmmaking, were very different. Yeah. At a time. Yeah, but for cheap productions, it was very common to just use real skeletons. Yeah, ma'am. Like, I'll act disgusted by it because it is disgusting, but... If it's what literally everyone was doing at that time right there, if I was in the film industry at that time, I very well may have done the exact same thing. Yeah. It's just a disturbing... It's just a disturbing thing to think about. It was still kind of frowned upon. Because, like... Okay. Uh, one of the actresses on Poltergeist spent, like, three days filming with these skeletons, and only afterwards learned that they were real. And she was yeah. very upset about that. <laughs> yeah I mean and, and also in my also in my fairness uh, I would never make anything fucking like this well no <laughs> it doesn't matter but like <laughs> I don't know Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Poltergeist these are good movies yeah this right here is pleasant sound and music This could be like fucking Sonic Adventure 2 Chow Garden music. <laughs> <laughs> they were just having some fun with his dick right there. Ooh. I, th- I think that's the first time anyone has ever mentioned Sonic Adventure 2 while watching a naked <laughs> man get fondled by native women. <laughs> it, it just reminds me of Sonic Adventure too much. He did. Honestly, Cannibal Holocaust potentially ripped... Oh, wait, no, the time is off. Sonic Adventure 2 ripped off Cannibal Holocaust. Well, I've got the topic for my next fanfic. (laughs) Oh. Soundtrack selection. Bashing my head into a... um, Getting my head bashed in with a brick to death. Uh, There is no god. Chow Garden OST Sonic Adventure 2. Hold on. What happened? Oh, they're bowing down. Ew. I mean, he feels really bad about it every time. Give him some credit. Are we supposed to pause? What's happening, Matt? <laughs> no. Okay. That, um... Yeah, that right there was the first reference of the film crew. What? Oh, I think that wasn't you speaking. That was the person on the radio speaking. <laughs>
Look, all I'm going to say is the cannibals I hang out with are a lot more chill than this. You know, this movie seriously fucked a couple movies in uh, in Britain when they were making the banned Video Nasties list. Uh, a lot of films got persecuted just for having the word cannibal in the title. So yeah. there, there's this movie called Cannibal Man. It's like a Spanish movie, I think. It is so fucking tame. It is... Yeah. It's about as violent as, like, Psycho or Peeping Tom. Yeah. But because it was called Cannibal Man, it got banned. <laughs> it just became, like, a keyword, like, do not use this in your movie. Yes. And you know what? Uh, we're also going to ban the word can <laughs> and hall. Just because they sound kind of similar. What is this Schindler's List shit about the Holocaust? Hmm, sounds a lot like Cannibal Holocaust. Banned. What is this Kimbo the White Lion 1997 film like here? Hmm, seems very similar. I keep referencing something very specific. I should probably stop. Anyways, Rich Alvarez. <laughs> you better fucking take a bite. You're gonna fucking offend my culture. Fucking take a bite. Piece of shit. Come on, man. This All is... the cool kids are doing it. I killed my son so you could have this. <laughs> Got add a little chew a sound effect in. Did anyone in this movie ever go off to do anything like big? Uh no, but yes. A lot of them are infamous for this movie now. Um, yeah. The one main guy here, the dude with the mustache, he was in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, but it was a very small role. But it was a what? It was a very small role. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I don't recognize him. Yeah, he was like a... He had like a boat captain. <laughs> tugboat captain this guy kind of looks like the guy from Dark Knight <laughs> Harvey Two-Face um, a lot of people in this went on to be in Cannibal Holocaust ripoffs because <laughs> Cannibal because they Hol just had so much fun on the first one. Yes. Because the first one made so much money. Because it, it's... It was horribly controversial, but the controversy was very profitable. <laughs> so, this sort of kick-started a genre of cannibal movies. And a lot of actors from Cannibal Holocaust went on to be in those Cannibal Holocaust ripoffs. And now you get similar reactions from movies like Joker. Like, what was I going to say? Um, a 
I said this was one of the most widely banned films. I don't believe it is the most widely banned film. Mm. I have looked into it. I can't find out what is. Mm -hmm. But the answer seems to be the Cannibal Holocaust ripoff, Cannibal Ferox. Cannibal Holocauster. (laughs) I think Cannibal Ferox is so much worse than Cannibal Holocaust. (laughs) <laughs> because I am not interested in seeing it. <laughs> it does all of the same <laughs> shitty stuff that they did in the production of this film. But in pursuit of being a ripoff, like, I will defend some of the stuff in this film. It is decent filmmaking, and I think there is a message to it. Yeah, I... I agree with that. I um it's uh it's defi- it's definitely a movie that takes me past my comfort zone, but it's also like it was something I was planning on seeing once. It's a very famously controversial film and I felt like I should see it just yeah. because I I love movies and I mean I should see I need to see the more I need to see the ones with a lot of history too, whether they're actually enjoyable to watch or not. Yeah, and, I, and and there is some enjoyment to this, just not, just not certain parts. I would argue if you can stomach it, you should watch this movie at least mm-hmm. once. Yeah, I can stomach it. It's just, I feel fucking. I don't like watching video of an animal get tortured. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's like Cannibal Holocaust has positive aspects to it that I can defend, which yeah. I can absolutely not say about Cannibal Ferox. Gotcha. <laughs> so it's all of the negatives of Cannibal Holocaust with none of the positives. I will say that it is not a terribly shot film and that the I agree with you 100% that the score is actually pretty good. I do. Th- I, I there's a message to the movie, but I'm realizing now how bad the pacing is and how long it takes to get to that part of the movie. Because <laughs> we're only just now, forty seven minutes in, getting to the part where they go into the jungle with the the film crew. <laughs> is the is the film's message? Hey, hey, kids. Don't eat people. No. (laughs) Okay, so they are (laughs) pro-cannibal. Proof. Proof. This... The film... The message of the film is... Sort of about sensationalist media. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is a topic I think has become more and more relevant since this film's release. Yeah. Um, Because this crew goes into the jungle to get footage of this, uh, you know, savage cannibal tribe to show how terrible they are. And then they get there and the savages aren't as savage as they want them to be. Yeah. So they very deliberately provoke the savages, to get the footage they want. Yeah. That's... That's pretty bad. Yeah. And that's... a very extreme example of what we see a lot in the media. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I, I hear I hear you, yeah. Hate to bring up anything topical, but it is a bit topical at the time we're recording this. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And feel, I mean, I don't care if you bring up anything topical. Is it still topical by the time this comes? I mean, probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this will be out in like three, four weeks. Yeah. And I, I, I would assume it's still topical by then. <laughs> Uh, 
I don't think it is perfect in delivering that message. The yeah. pacing is bad, and I also think, like, uh, the people they go poking around with are not as innocent as maybe the premise suggests they should be. Mm-hmm. But I, I get the message. I understand the message. And I kind of appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, you can, yeah, you can like aspects of a film while acknowledging the negatives, too. I am a full, I am a full believer of that. It's the same thing as liking a movie that has an actor that's done something shitty in it, you know? Yeah, well, I, I will go on record that, like, there are films I enjoy that I think have a bad message. Mm hmm. You know? There's, um, episodes of TV shows that I like that have bad messages. Oh, yeah. I think oh, that, yeah. uh. I. Rick and Morty is a show that has a lot of bad messages. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, Rick and Morty, not to get way too off topic here, has a very cynical message. And there's some good and bad in it. Uh, I think that season four of Community have some bad messages. I think even something as innocent as Steven Universe has an episode with a bad message. Yeah. I think it is important to acknowledge, like, hey... I enjoy this film even if these things are perhaps problematic about it. Yeah. And as on the flip side of that, you know, a film like Cannibal Holocaust where I go, I don't like the film, but I acknowledge what it's doing and I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, and this is like something that I, I, I I'm happy to watch at this one time with you. I'm probably yeah. never watching this again. <laughs> uh, but but I yeah, do, I probably I'm, won't either. That doesn't I mean, mean that doesn't mean I won't look up the score after the movie though. Because I I take, I, that, I, I take that back. I'm gonna have to watch it again to edit this. <laughs> but I will. Uh, yeah, you're going to be able to show a lot of good footage, Matt, in a YouTube video. You're going to be able to show shots of them walking in a forest. And that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just play Shark Tale f- footage every time. <laughs> every time there's an inappropriate scene. Well, I was going to I was going to find like relevant stuff for like <laughs> Oh, they're cutting open a turtle. I'm just gonna, like, play footage from, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something. Just make it, like, the cutest shit every single time something awful is happening. Just, like, type in cute turtle videos and find stuff to put open. And I didn't know that happened yet. That's, uh, I'm not looking forward to watching that part. (laughs) Spoilers. I don't care about the spoilers. I'm just dreading watching that. (laughs) Uh, We'll talk about it when it happens. (laughs) (laughs) Ha (laughs) ha! Women be shopping! (laughs) They always like to be shopping. Oh, it might be now. It might be now. The turtle scene might be now. (laughs) Could that be what they were foreshadowing in the previous scenes? Yeah, this... The, so, the animal abuse is not something that I can say, oh, I would have done it at the time. I don't know. Like, that... No, that was not common in the industry. Yeah. That They're... was... Even even Rogero Diodato, who directed the movie, has been like, I would not do that now. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> Here's the thing, I think it's defensible, I just don't think it's a good defense. You know? Uh All of the animals got eaten, and, uh... Oh, poor It is not the only movie to do that. Yeah. I will say, of all of the, like, horrible, disgusting, gross shit in this movie, 
I think this is the grossest scene. Yeah, I I will also just say too that it's like <sighs> what I'll say about it is like ah man I'm losing my train of thought just because of this like it. I, I mean, know. you see, <laughs> they're not into it either. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that reaction from her could have been very real. Oh yeah. god. That... There are there are some very real reactions in this movie. Yeah. I God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> I want to be funny. I want to make this an uplifted thing. I just don't know how to make jokes while watching something like this. Yeah. I, it, it, I, I've heard about what this movie does. I've always heard about it. It's not like I was oblivious to it. It's just like, now I'm actually looking at it, and I it's, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, this is the scene that is the hardest for me to stomach. Mmm. Mmm. Hope you at home are all doing okay. Yeah, how's everybody doing? Uh, Rich Alvarez, everyone. God. I've, like, made fun of... I, I, I've been a fan of Rich Alvarez for a very long time, and I've made fun of his content. Um, just because, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of lovingly making fun of it while also criticizing parts of it. But saying that he made this might be the most offensive thing I've ever said about him. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, yeah. And they're not like, it's not just something that's glanced over. This is like, this is a detailed scene. Yeah. I, uh, that a, that's another thing I think I'll defend Cannibal Holocaust on very slightly. I think it has this reputation as like, this shocking film for shock value's sake. And I would disagree. I, I, there is a point to it. Mm -hmm. Does it go overboard? Yes. Should they have murdered animals? Absolutely not. Yeah. But it is not just shock value for shock value's sake. Mm -hmm. I, uh... a lot of movies I could name. Mm hmm. Even then, sometimes I will defend shock, shocking stuff for shock value's sake. There's a limit. I... There's a point where it gets so disgusting and so nihilistic that I'm like, I can't stand watching this. Mm -hmm. But there are films where I'm like, it's shock value for shock value's sake, but it's all in good fun. Yeah. So I kind of enjoy it. I think... I think often shows like Rick and Morty or South Park have a very shocking sense of humor. Yeah. Um, and I think for the most part, neither of the shows seem malicious to me. No. You see, that's so... how my that's how my sister would react to a daddy long leg. <laughs> uh, they killed the spider. Mm, animal abuse. Yeah, I don't kill spiders. I mean. I, I, it, feel, it feels a little fucked up that I feel less sad about that one than the other two. <laughs> but I, I also, like, if I see a spider, I put it in a cup and let it outside. Or just let it live in the house. I don't, I, I'm honestly not afraid of spiders at all. <laughs> no, I'm not either. Uh, wasps um, I'm fucking horrified of. <laughs> I'll open a window if it's doable. Mad props to my apartment, like, I kind of expected living in a place this cheap I'd be dealing with at least some bugs. I haven't seen any bugs here, except some ants out on my balcony. And that was kind of my fault. There's some snake abuse right there. Eh. Um. I have killed snakes before. I will admit that much. I haven't. Um... Not gonna... To be fair, it was a poisonous snake. We we were doing some yard work. Uh-huh. Um, it was actually, like, a lot of people. Um, I think it was Boy Scouts, actually. 
Boy Scouts, we were doing some yard work for someone, and I found a poisonous snake in, like, all the leaves. Uh-huh. And we're like, all right, let's just, uh, cut the head off of that and go about our business. I have a family member who killed a snake once, and it was, like, kind of like, uh, it was kind of like Strike 3, because this, like, they kept moving the snake, but it was, like, climbing up a tree to eat, like, a bird's nest they had. Uh-huh. And then Strike 3 was like, okay, it's not going to stop trying to do this. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. uh... It was my grandma, and she cared more about the birds than the snake, so. Yeah, Str- well, it was, you know, a bunch of us were doing, your, it was like a whole group of us, and this snake is right up with us, and it's deadly, so we're like, alright, don't want to deal with a deadly snake around some people, let's yeah. just get rid of it. Yeah. If it were like a garden snake, we'd just pick it up and move it, but it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I think the only thing I kill is wasps, like, or, or mosquitoes. I'm a, I'm a little, I don't like bees flying in my face, but I'll open a window for them because we can't kill the bees. <laughs> yeah, I try uh, to avoid killing bees. Yeah. Uh, I am not afraid at all of killing bugs. <sighs> Most of them, I'm like, nah, fuck them. Yeah, if there's, like, a ladybug in my house, I'll just let it be. If there's a spider in my house, I'll just let it be. Bees Uh, I'll try to save. We have a wasp, uh, either a wasp or yellow, it might be a, it might be a hornet, I don't, I don't know, yellow jacket hornet. Um, we got a a nest on our, on the top of my house, and they've been getting in the house every single day. We gotta do something about it. (laughs) It's only, like, one a day, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's, uh, still alarming. Um, <laughs> and th- so thanks, um, you, you have been watching what animals are okay to murder with Matt and I, Michael. Uh, <laughs> as far as animals I've killed, I've killed a lot of bugs. Yeah. Uh, I have killed a snake. I have killed a fish, but I then ate the fish. So, yeah, you know, it was for food. Yeah. I, uh, participated in eating fish that we've caught before. I've never actually caught one. I mean, I've caught one and then let it go, but, uh, I think, I think I am only guilty of wasp, fly, and, uh, well, yeah, wasp and fly murder. That's probably about it. I might have shot a bird. I don't remember. My brother shot a bird when we were really little. Mm -hmm. And I felt very sad. But, you know, I, I grew up in the South. Yeah. Everyone around here goes hunting. Oh, people hunting do that. Hunting is a very common fixture. People do that in my fucking... Behind my house. It's fucked up. <laughs> I'm not nice. even lying. <laughs> it is nice. very popular over here. I'm not like... I'm not playing morality police here. I'm just... I'm just saying how it is. <laughs> I had no problem with hunting. As long as you eat it. Yeah. You know... Uh, oh, there it is. There's God the monkey. damn it. Fucking Christ. I mean, how do you I'm... not talk about it when watching this? Fuck. I will say, we were, like, joking about movies that have ripped this off. I think Temple of Doom might have been slightly inspired by this. <laughs> Because there's a lot of shit in Temple of Doom that is similar to Cannibal Holocaust. And you can also really see where Richie got his inspiration for Season 1 of Stupid Mario Bros. And, but that's not really a rip-off, because that's just that's just a director improvement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, me, cause so, like, I know you referenced it earlier, me and Zach do this on my channel. Um... And I would say up to this point, the most controversial commentary I've done was Eight Crazy Nights. (laughs) An Adam Sandler movie. And we're just, like, jumping all the way up (laughs) as far as we can fucking go. I I will say, Cannibal Holocaust, there's a lot to talk about. It's a conversation starter. Absolutely.
But yeah, clearly the uh, documentary film crew are not be paint, being painted as great people. Yeah. I do I do get what you're saying now with the message now too, for sure. Like I I I um is there a better approach? A uh, more humane approach to this? Yes. Yes. Um, there was a better way to do this, but I mean, they wanted to make a realistic movie, and I get that, but I mean, I think they committed they committed a lot of the crimes that they're uh, criticizing to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, God. I forgot there was a fucking other one. Oh. God. <laughs> yeah, the... The actor very deliberately sort of stammered over his lines, hoping <laughs> that Ruggiero Diodato wouldn't use the shot of them killing a pig. Oh, but he man. did anyway. <laughs> God. I, I guess, like, was a contract... I guess it's just kind of a contract-signed scenario. Now they're just trying their best to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. I would sympathize I mean, with an actor who didn't know what they were getting themselves into. I feel like you can make a movie about this movie being made in a humane way. Um, I, I mentioned uh, Cannibal Ferox. One of the actors in that would not kill an animal. So all the shots of him killing an animal were like cutaways with a different actor. Yeah. Say that last part again, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I got distracted. All, all the shots of him killing an animal were a different actor just filmed with his hands. Just mm. filmed another actor's hands killing the animal. Mm. In this movie? In Cannibal Ferox. Oh, Cannibal Ferox. I know there was a few shots in this movie where you did, like, where it was kind of a close-up. So I thought maybe you were talking about this. Um, that might have happened in this, too. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Oh, but this music's nice, right? <laughs> As they're burning people alive. soundtrack selection I want to fucking kill myself well, this song is just called Cannibal Holocaust main theme yeah this was the music they were playing in the opening right? yes I was gonna say soundtrack uh, I want to fucking kill myself I'm trying to improvise them on the spot you know biting every finger off individually <clears throat> the sun a nice day a nice sunny day. I th that one wasn't very good. I stuttered too much. Cut it out. Cut it out, Matt. Cut it out. If you don't cut it out, I'll, I'll fucking come for you, alright? I don't know where you live, but... You'll come for me? Yeah. Yeah. Sexy. Wink, wink. <laughs> This this video is already getting demonetized. We can do all the sex jokes we want. <laughs> Contra, uh, for okay, I'm a little worried about the controversy though, Matt. So let's just say uh, I'm Zatch, okay? Zatch joined you for this one. 
Mackle was a good boy. Mackle just wanted to watch Rich Alvarez's other projects. Mackle wanted to do a commentary on Adam Sandler's Pixels. But Zatch was like, nope, doing the cannibal movie. I don't know. I might rather watch this than Pixels. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hard hard call. Pixels does have uh, Peter Dinklage, so that gives it the edge. Yeah. I feel like almost like a little bit of a hypocrite just getting so offended by the pig death scene because, like you said, they eat the pig. Yeah. And, I mean, I've eaten, I eat pork, so. Yeah, that's the, it just, that's the one I'm kind of the least upset about, both because it is an animal I actively eat and because it is the least graphic death. They're just like it's just they're just still on the ground making love. That's all that's happening. Yes. Which uh there was a love interest in Kimba. So, you know. Motherfucker. Get the fuck out of here. It, it, <laughs> it's a great Imagine delivery. you're like deep, deep into like the fucking jungle and you're you're with your girlfriend and you're just like, I'm gonna fuck my girlfriend entire in front of this entire village of people whose house I just burned down. God Imagine being one of the people who came in for dubs. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh, thesis statement of the movie. Thesis statement. Thesis statement. Ew. And hence, everything we did was okay. <laughs> Can we just watch Wabu instead next time, Matt? 
I already watched Wapu. That's been done. <laughs> Next year, I probably will watch something a little tamer. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm thinking next year I'll probably live stream Haxon. Because that is a banned movie that is now public domain. Gotcha. You'll live stream it? Probably. So I'm assuming it's a, it is like significantly tamer than this movie. Yes. It's from the 20s. Gotcha. Isn't there like a movie that got banned where most I mean and you can watch it now but most of the footage is gone it's like just this like freak show movie where they actually um, got people who were part of a real freak show act to be in oh it. Todd Browning's freaks it yeah. is literally sitting right here on my desk next to me <laughs> that's funny uh yeah it was 80 minutes and like now it is a little over 60. Because the entire ending got gutted. Yeah, I... By I, the studio. And I know about that, and it's just, like, unfortunately not saved. So it's yeah. a piece of history that's gone. Uh, one of the videos I have made for Band Films Week is... Films that have gotten lost because of a ban. Mm -hmm. And I actually didn't include the ending of Freaks, and I feel like retrospectively maybe I should have... Well, the movie, some... the movie still exists in a more or less complete form, but the uncut version is lost. Yeah. Well, here's a little bit of acknowledgement right here, but yeah, it's like um, I know most of it is still available. They changed the ending because they thought it was too scary. Honestly, yes. compared to stuff, my guess would be that it. My guess would be it would be kind of uncanny because a lot of older movies are super uncanny. There's just a feel to them that people can't replicate today. Um, but yeah. uh, but I'm I also really going like to assume freaks. it was like I'm going to assume it was also pretty tame. Uh, for its time, it is quite creepy. Mm -hmm. But. But I mean, I like will, the lost I will footage. agree that it is fairly tame, all things considered. I'm gonna say like the I meant like the lost ending, just just out of the assumption that people, I would say people used to be more sensitive to this sort of thing. Granted, there was a time where this movie was allowed to exist, and it would not be allowed to exist today. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll agree to that. It, it's kind um, of like different. Different things have changed. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of what got banned, like, way back in the day, uh, is pretty tame by today's standards. Yeah. But, during, like, the 70s and 80s, which is, like, the height of exploitation films, there's a lot of shit like this yeah. that just could not get made today. Do you um, think... Do you think it's a fair statement to make that uh, the reasons this movie was so frowned upon back then, um, some of them are the same as they are today, as they would be today, but some of them were also different? As in, I... like, there might be some things that they watched in this movie that didn't offend them that would offend people today, but there's stuff that offended people back then that doesn't offend people today? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe. I'm, I I'm going to say mostly no. I'm going to say most of what this made this film infamous is still going to be a problem today. I would agree with that mainly because I feel like the a lot of the rape scenes and the animal abuse I feel like is a big, like, largely frowned upon. I yeah. I think one of the big ones is people would just assume that it's not real today. I don't think that would yeah. be a controversy. Yeah, that is one thing. I mean, in the 80s, like, everything was so low quality that, yeah. like, half of the reason you couldn't make this today is because it would look too clean, too yeah. polished. It, it wouldn't look real. 
no one would yeah. buy that this is real. Yeah, even on low resolution, like, some of the practical effects do look pretty convincing, but there is also just, there are, like I said, there's shots where it literally looks like they're painting on their stomachs. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of how films like this happened back in the day, where it was like, oh yeah, there's a real murder in this, and people believed it because it was, like, VHS quality. I will say, on on the topic of rape, uh, the BBFC, when they were banning films for the Video Nasties list, were incredibly sensitive about sexual violence. Yeah. So there were one or two movies that got banned that were relatively tame in all departments. They just had, like, a little sexual violence, and that's what ended up getting the band. Uh, there's a film called Visiting Hours, and I am positive the only reason it got banned is because there's a scene where the kid, like, this woman is about to have sex with the killer, finds out he is a murderer, and then he, she tries to leave and he, like, forces her down and has sex with her. Mm-hmm. So, I am positive that film only got banned because of that single scene. Because other than that, it is pretty tame. Yeah. Unlike this movie, which is... Yeah, I mean, we're Very fucked it. up in every way. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, like, there's... If you're gonna do something like this, you gotta, like... I think you really gotta, like, have, like, a respectable way to go about it. And this is not that. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. No, and I, know, I think... And I know it's not real, but... Yeah. I think rape is the most sensitive thing you can bring up in a movie. So yeah. you have to be very careful about how you introduce it. Yeah. Ah, the most infamous scene. Is this one that, like, a lot of people were very convinced it was real? Yes. Uh, this lady on a pike. This woman is alive. She was, there's, like, a bicycle seat on the bottom part of the pole, and the top part of the pole is just, she put it in her mouth. But it's very realistic, and a yeah. lot of people were fully convinced this woman was on a pike. And it has become the endearing symbol of the film. Like, yeah. half half the posters for this movie are this shot of the woman on the pole. Yeah. Um, it's a very, yeah, I mean, it's a very well done effect and honestly you say it's most infamous i think it's like i mean it's a special effect it it feels like one of the more tame things about the movie honestly it's just a, uh yeah i wouldn't disagree with that yeah it does feel a bit tame but people were fully convinced that was just a dead body on a pike yeah and you see we shouldn't we shouldn't be so mean to logan paul he was just he was just trying to reenact his favorite movie. <laughs> Is that one not okay to make? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it. <laughs> it's going on my channel, so fuck it. <laughs> it's definitely not pro Logan Paul. <laughs> I'm gonna just make the thumbnail for this video. That picture of Logan Paul <laughs> looking at the woman on the pike. <laughs> I think it's okay to show stuff like that. Because, um, I mean, even that scene was, like, one of the more respectful scenes in the movie. It's shown how big of, like, how fucking shitty these people are. How big of a hypocrite they really are. 
Because you're oh, wow, yeah. who would do something like this? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, like, if, if you notice, he was, like, smiling when he saw the body. And yeah. then they're like, hey, careful, Mark, we're filming. Oh, yeah. this is so disgusting. And now this is them revolting. Yeah. And it's, they were kind of like a peaceful nation at one point, and now, uh, not so much. I don't know about peaceful, but at least, like, not as violent as yeah these guys wanted to depict them as. Yeah. I, I definitely understand what the movie was going for. Oh, man. Well, they look like they're having fun. And I guess at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. I mean... I'm not gonna act like the film crew didn't deserve it. Yeah. And that's what they're eating at the beginning of the movie. Then they come in and say, savages. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like... You know, maybe you don't have... you don't. They didn't have to eat the people, but... You know, they could have just done the murder. The first time I saw this movie, I'm like, you know, I could really go for some fried chicken. <laughs> so it does kind of look like that's what they're eating. Just chicken on the bone. It, and, and it just makes the chicken all the more appealing. This is one of the few video nasties I watched before my infatuation with the video nasties. Yeah. It was this, Evil Dead, which is actually a great movie, uh -huh. and Driller Killer, which I had only seen because it was public domain. Yeah. I can't believe they keep saying the F word. Such naughty language. Yeah, I can see why this movie got some into some controversy. Alright, you know what, Matt? I am completely down with animal abuse. But when someone says the F word, that's when they're going a little too far. I can excuse animal abuse, but I draw the line at swearing. <laughs>
just play that scene from Community. <laughs> I don't even know if you've seen that scene yet. <laughs> I know it's a big meme. Yeah. <laughs> God, there is, like, a lot of that in this movie. And, I mean, you've mentioned it on Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie show before. There were a lot of movies in the past that just did not handle this type of thing well. Yeah, no, I'm very critical of... Oh, I know you um, are. ...rape scenes in movies. Yeah. I, um... Yeah, I don't... I think the only times I can say it's ever been, like, done well is kind of when it's an off-screen thing, but it's still relevant enough to the story. Yeah. Um... It's been a long time since I've seen Gran Torino. I need to rewatch it. But my memory of the film is that Gran Torino does a pretty decent job with it. I think Split did an okay job, and it doesn't show... It literally shows nothing. It's just there's a scene that, like, you know what's going on. Hmm. Um, have you seen Split? I have. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, not really. Her, I don't remember a scene like that. The main character's, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, spoiler. yeah. Okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah, and it's... And I do it's, remember that. And to me, it's done in a very, uh... Politically correct way. I mean, it's still... It's still very disturbing... But it's not done in a way where it's like something had to be shot, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and it works with the character. I love how they just keep cutting to this guy and he just looks ashamed. And that's probably just, like, his actual reaction to, like, oh, god damn it, why am I in this? What did I get myself into? <laughs> they just pulled him in the room and showed him the movie, and it's, like, him actually ashamed of himself. I would love it if they just showed footage of him, like, committing horrible crime after horrible crime by himself and just making that same upset face. Oh, man. Oh, I feel so bad. Well, it wasn't quite Citizen Kane, but... That's... <laughs> <laughs> This, I think, is one of the more poignant aspects of the movie, even if it's harder to miss. This channel absolutely wants to air the footage they have shot. Yeah. Until they see, like, the end of it. Yeah. And they see how badly the, uh, the group has behaved, the film crew has behaved. Yeah. And then they're like, nah, cancel it. Yeah. Going full, uh... Werner Herzog. I feel you need like to destroy this footage. Yeah, I feel like there's a good concept in there somewhere for a movie. And again, we've already kind of said this, but like, there is a good concept there. It's just, oh man. I mean, you could not show this to people today, and I don't think you could really show it to people back then either. Hence, what happened with it. Um. Yeah. All well, right. That's the last line. I wonder who the real cannibals are. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Matt. <laughs>
that's why I, I asked you beforehand, like, are you okay watching this? <laughs> yeah, no, no. And I'm, I, I, I didn't know exactly how bad it was. Um, but I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I will never watch that again. I did not enjoy that, but I'm not angry yeah. at you for. Sh I'm not angry at you for showing it to me, and I was completely down with whatever I was getting myself into. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like we've said it all already. You know, yeah. there's good aspects to it, but it goes too far. It's not. You know, it's not the most tasteful. It's not the most well paced. Yeah. But it has something going for it. Yeah. I like the I like the score and I think if um someone who wasn't an absolute madman made it, um maybe it could have been a good movie. <laughs> Diodato's made some good films. I like uh Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> This this is forever his legacy. Yeah. Cannibal Holocaust. I I mean, right. you know, there there's two pretty major things for me that set it back from being something, you know, that that, that I could like enjoy. You know, there's there's two but they're two really, really impossible things to overlook. 